Time now for your local sports with Andy Curtis. Well, basketball season kicked off 2018 last night with the Capitol High boys making that trip up north to take on Great Falls. Jumping into things here, Bruins led by two at the half and Parker Johnston in the lane, off the glass and in. The road team is looking good early on. Capital works it around here now to Bridger Groven for the corner three, five point Bruin lead. But here come the Bison, Hunter McKinney from the top of the arc. No problem, he ties it up. Precision, skill, and intensity. That pretty much sums up Isaac. But I figured I could still give him a few pointers to help him out before he headed to state. I don't want to just win this state title. I want to dominate at my weight. I, I don't want to just win. I want to dominate every kid I wrestle and not make a single mistake. I want to say good luck to Isaac and all of our area wrestlers. Intelligence, athleticism, and toughness are your requirements for being a goalie. <laughs> then I'm your guy. <laughs> so being the man that I am and always looking for an excuse to miss actual work, I asked Ebby to show me the ropes with a little bit of help from her horse, Zeke the Streak. Just keep the rope tight and, uh, you know, bend your knees good, get, you know, get that good old basketball stance going on a little bit there and uh, should be good to go. Well, she knows what she's talking about because after a slow and somewhat terrifying start, I found my ski legs and was tearing up the course just like a grizzled vet. <laughs> Great teams have one thing in common, chemistry. And the Helena Capital football team helps maintain theirs by getting back to the great outdoors. You know, something that we kind of do is kind of get away, enjoy the Montana outdoors. We're all kind of born and raised and very active outdoors. And we kind of have a connection like that between coach and players. The bonds that players and coaches make during high school sports can last long after the game is over. And the Helena Capital football team is a great example of that. Because when they're not on the field, a handful of players and coaches are here, in the field, spending almost every weekend hunting or fishing whatever's in season. Um, it's something when we're at before practice or after practice that we'll talk about, just kind of something to get our mind off of football every once in a while before or after practice or like, yeah, just any time. I mean, it always gives us something to talk about and stuff. And yeah, it just builds like a, a friendship. But it's more than just about making some new hunting buddies. These good bonds outside of the games lead to great bonds during the season. I ordered a new zinc one that I told you. Tell you. you know, we have that line. They know where player coach and our friendship is. But when it's game time and we're talking, I mean, the trust, the bond that we have, it's kind of inseparable and it kind of, it's helped us in the last three years. So. It just gives us another thing in common. I mean, obviously we have football, uh, add hunting to it. It's fun to spend time with people who have common interests. Um, but as far as the players like developing that relationship, uh, establishing trust and I mean, it just helps us out quite a bit. And hopefully for these guys, the friendships are ones that last a lifetime. If you're with people that love football and then you find that they like other stuff that you like too, then it just strengthens the friendship and everything and just makes everything a lot more fun. You know, I got to coach some pr pretty cool kids the last three years in a row. I got to have them from their sophomore year to their senior year. Um, you know, I hope this relationship continues beyond high school and when they get older, when they have kids, when they get married, I'm hopefully in part of their life and someone that they call or if they ever need help from. one more time, the wind is helping us right now. Obviously have a relationship through football, that's how we've kind of met all these kids. Um, and then if we can con continue to do stuff outside of football and spend time together, it just helps build those relationships and make them more like lifelong rather than in the moment. From the looks of it, they have a great shot of doing just that. Live here at Helena High before the big crosstown game between the undefeated Helena High girls and undefeated Capital High Bruins. The unstoppable force versus an immovable object. And tonight, something's gonna have to give. Former Great Falls star Jake Wetzel. Jake Buckets nails this corner three. That's money, easy money, folks. And just before the half, Jared Schultz. Transition layup off the give and go, making it look good for the home crowd. Providence led 34-32 at the break. 
But Northern, moving the ball well, lob to Reeves, who throws it down, a little bit extra hang time. Delaney Junkemeyer, a three from the top of the key. She hits it, of course. She had 22 points on the evening. Then Rebecca Hatchard from deep, no problem. The Aussie totaled 16. Moments later, Hannah Caudell joins the party with this three, and the Cats are rolling. They had 18 threes in the game. That's a school record, and MSU wins their 30th straight home game, defeating Southern Utah 91-71. The Montana State women's basketball team started their day today just like any other with an early morning practice. But that's where the same old, same old ended and they boarded a plane bound for Seattle and their first NCAA tournament in 24 years. But if they're feeling the pressure from this historic accomplishment, they're not showing it. Well, we're here with Anna Kalai of the Montana State Bobcats and I just want to ask you a few questions here today. Um, how excited and how do you feel going into this next game? I mean, I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a great experience for us. And yeah, I think I think we're all really excited to keep up our season and just take it to Washington. You know, I don't think we have nerves yet. Yeah, I hope that they don't come. But I mean, knowing that it's a sold-out game, I mean, I think when we get there and we look up in the stands and see the, every seat and the house is taken, yeah. might might sink in a little bit more at that point. Being on national TV, I mean, ESPN two will be really cool, and having so many people there just because we have. Uh, three or four girls from the Washington State and basically like a home game. We've uh, prepared them in advance as far as the extra media attention, the extra media coverage, boosters traveling with us, a lot of administration, all the different factors outside that are going to be a little bit new and then try to keep everything else to be to be the same to be quite honest. So we're trying to uh, just uh, prepare like we would any other game. And with a handful of the players being from right here in Washington, the team was in store for some good old-fashioned Pacific Northwest hospitality. Uh, we're just going to go over to the bar room's uh, house tonight for dinner and try to do something a little bit lower key and uh, hang out and uh, enjoy being in Seattle before we lock in for tomorrow. We're going to be with the team for the remainder of their run in the tournament. We're going to have more for you tomorrow and, of course, Saturday. But until then, in Seattle, Washington, for MTN Sports. Well, it's been 24 years since Montana State was last in the NCAA tournament, and though tonight's game didn't go exactly how they wanted, it was still one heck of a season. Uh, I can't think of uh, a more exciting team, a more fun team to have coached. And uh, we just addressed it back there. Unfortunately, there's only one team that gets to finish with a win. It's always uh, hard to finish the se season on this. But at the same time, I, we promised them uh, that we we're going to give a great effort, and we definitely left it all out there. No one more than Peyton Ferris, who scored 33 points while playing with a heavy heart after losing a close family friend this week. I talk about it being a dream, and I was kind of, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of anchored down by emotions this whole week. Uh, and... That kind of kept me calm, though. I didn't really, I'm, I was just numb this week, I guess. Um, but, but then again, this environment kind of offset it. You come in and think about where you're at and appreciate life. That was Cats basketball. And uh, some things got away from us. Credit uh, University of Washington. They are very, a very talented squad that we hope will um, go far in the tournament, but um, yeah, not Peyton Ferris uh, is the real deal. With them and get them to be your partner doing this is a pretty spectacular thing. And it's not just cows these riders and their horses can work. Go on, now stop, turn the other way. Go. Still trying to get to my car in Bozeman, Andy Curtis, MTN Sports. There's a lot going on. You're doing awesome. Down a couple of classes, the Class C, in a battle of the undefeated. Fort Benton, Box Elder, and the Lady Bears starting strong. Lillian Gophers found open down the floor here. Look at that brilliant up and under move for the bucket. Then it's Gopher again. She finds 6-3. Cecilia Vili under the basket. She fights off the double team and puts it up and in. Box Elder leads 34-19 at the half. Second half, Longhorns trying to fight back. McKenna Hanford is open in the corner. She drills that three. 
but it wouldn't matter. Lady Bears just too powerful in this one. Box Elder goes on to remain undefeated. Back in the stands watching that win tonight was Helena Superfan, Bangle Billy. The longtime fixture at Helena Sporting Events has been battling some health issues recently that made attending games a little bit more difficult. But he was back tonight, and it's always something the team appreciates. You know, upbeat personality. All the kids love him and respect him. Um, and he's, you know, he still brings a smile to everybody's face. He, uh, he sparks uh, our team, honestly, he sparks the entire program. Like when he's here, he just has so much energy. It's nice to have somebody like that. Gone from unranked all the way up to number 14 in the polls this week, and they're looking to prove their spot tonight against MSU Northern. Close game in the third quarter, and Brandy Lamborn with a great cutting pass to Kalina Sagapool. But the Argos, they're going to answer right back. Stephanie McDonough with a great first step for the layup. Now the Argos led 49-43 entering the fourth. That's when Lamborn gets red hot. Step back jumper here to keep things close. I don't even know how many people could do what she's done. That's the reaction that Townsend's Katana Shrigley gets from a lot of people. Because this past season was the seniors first back on the court after her battle with Burkett's lymphoma. Um, she was this time last year she was in the hospital. Maybe just the lightest she's ever been, puking, having like just going through the fight of her life. And now she's back behind me just playing the game that she loves. And this is her second year of ever playing volleyball and she's come leaps and bounds and super proud of her. But it wasn't easy. And the biggest challenge for the natural athlete wasn't getting back into the gym, but getting out of her own way. It was definitely like a struggle to push myself, but it wasn't that hard. But mentally it was really hard to get back in and like because I lost so much and I had only played for a year and then I had to bring myself back and relearn things and that was definitely a really hard part to not get frustrated with myself for not being able to keep up with things. And she is so strong. She's one of the strongest people I've ever met um, she, and she's just solid. She's been the heart of our team since I've been a coach on and off the court. Um, the girls look up to her tons and tons and uh, just for her strength and her leadership and um, her ground to be. And that's awesome because uh, she's grateful to be playing again. And that's because she can't imagine doing anything else. Like I, my family and I moved around a lot when I was a kid, so I never was really a part of like sports or anything. And then sophomore year, I just, first time I ever touched volleyball, I just automatically loved it. And I, I know what it's like to sit there and watch and not play and I couldn't do it again. So I figured I might as well. <laughs> Even if like, if I came back and was on C squad, I still would have played. <laughs> I just couldn't sit there and watch again. I couldn't not come back after all the support that they gave me and just, it's a big family. See behind me, we are live at the Bears Den just before tip off between Helena High, Helena Capital. Big crosstown showdown tonight and it's scheduled to start at 7.30. So if you're watching me right now, you still got some time to get down here. And I highly recommend that you do it because it's going to be a great game. Uh, Capitals, Caleb Bradford in control of Caleb McKay. And he's going to roll up the bangle for the easy pin. He's going to jump up a couple of pounds, a couple of sandwiches, if you will, to 160. And Helena's Connor McKay with a nice takedown of Dalton Snyder. And this McKay will eventually work that into a pin. And he's going to help keep Helena in it tonight. Then two minutes left. Mackenzie Johnson on the break. Kicks it to Taylor Goligoski for three. She buries it. It's a one-point game. 56-55. Same score now. 30 seconds left. Montana, nothing going in this possession until Sophia Stiles cuts it in the paint. Scores and one. Lady Grizz take their first lead of the game. Now this game goes into overtime. And the Lady Grizz hold on to start conference play. They win at 70. The coolest part about this job is getting to drive one of these. Bozeman, Andy Curtis. MTN Sports.